Hi, everyone. Agnes here with Kim again. Hello, Kim. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, we're back again doing our thing. We've been talking for over an hour and a half behind the scenes, <laughs> but we thought we'd hop on and actually do a YouTube for you also. Yes, we almost were like, oh, <laughs> we just got chatting away. <laughs> oh, we just lost track of time. Always. But today, we thought we'd talk a little bit about pre-paving versus revision. What do you think about those two things, Kim? I love it. So revision is like this hot topic in the Neville community and everybody really loves revision. And I think both techniques are really powerful, but I tend to prefer the pre-paving myself, but that's just my personal experience um, and what I prefer. And the main reason is, is because I like to be in control of my thinking. So the more I'm mastering my mind, I'm pre-paving what is going to happen in my reality rather than not controlling my mind and then having to go back and try to revise and, you know, fix something from the past to change the, I don't even know. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't. Cause to me, it's, it's going in when I look at revision and you, after this, I want to hear what your thoughts are about yeah. revision because this is like. Uh, you could look at it so many different ways. So I look at revision as when we pull up a memory of the past, right? We want to change something that happened. So it's really about changing your state by changing the story. So to me, it's, it's really just about changing your consciousness. So you're creating the experience going forward where it's still in your favor. I don't know. That's the way I interpret mm. it. I know there's different interpretations. What do you think about revision? I agree with you. I would pick pre-paving over revision. Why? Because it's easier to line up your energy before you go into a situation than have to clean up something that went bad. So obviously with stuff from childhood, you're going to use revision because you can't go back before those events. So revision's good for childhood stuff, teenagerhood or whatever, those times that, that you're obviously way past that on the timeline. But if today you're going to go into a, a job interview or you're going to go and talk to, you know, the person that you want to date and you want to have a really good conversation with them or you're going to go and sort out, you know, something with a lawyer or whatever, you're going to, if you can sit for, say, 10 minutes, go through it half a dozen times how you want it to be, line up your energy so that when you walk in the door to have that conversation, it falls into the wave so much better because yeah. you've done the work, you've lined up, you've shored up your own self in advance. So right. I today much prefer pre-paving rather than revising things if it's stuff that hasn't happened yet. So, yeah, I pre-pave all the time because it saves me a lot of having to go over problems and things that didn't work. Right. Right. And mm. I think too, it's like, when you look at, we're creating all day long, like that's what we're doing. We're creating, we're creating, we're creating what our reality is going to reflect back to us. And I look at that. You're always in a sense, revising in a way it, to me, it's really the same thing. I'm choosing the story that suits me better. So whether I'm doing it, I'm trying to forecast how I want this one event to happen that hasn't happened yet. I'm replaying it in my mind. Um, to me, it's still revision because if you really look deep in this shit, there really is no time, right? Like it's just mm. time in the 3d because of where we live and the planet and all of that and the laws around that. But like, you're really just, again, creating an experience that you want. Even when you go and affirm something from your past, you're changing your concept of self. You're creating a new reality for you where this was no longer an issue. If it's mm. been an issue, because I know like when I work with people and I have like, when they go back and we're revising, like if you had failed relationships and then we're, re we're, we're affirming a new concept of self where I am the woman who's always chosen by every man she's ever been involved with, or, you know, every man I've ever been involved with has always wanted to marry me, right? Whether that's true or false, that's the reality I'm creating. So that will go and revise the old concept of self and the old reality if that was not the case, right? Does that, did mm. I just use it even more? Cause it's, 
no, 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 because really what you're doing with revision is there's two layers. You're revising a scene, but that's not the most important part. You're revising the emotional fish hook you still got in your neck now about that back then. You're trying to unhook yourself from that negative emotional experience of the past still being alive today in you. So you go and date somebody, but you're already starting to anticipate not being chosen, not being cherished, not being valued, someone um, sleeping around on you and you are again in a second best scenario, you're preempting that if you haven't revised that. So you're revising those situations so you do not go into the forward future event yeah. carrying that stuff in emotionally that's yeah. it you gotta it's you gotta get the fish hook out so that yes. you don't recreate it again yes yes because if you're going in there thinking the old way you've always thought about you and you're assuming what's going to happen you're creating that to keep happening and yes. this is how we shift from one reality to the other is when we say no 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 this is not who I am anymore. This is who I am. I yeah. am the woman who has it all. I am the man who's, you know, wealthy and whatever. And we're, we're identifying something new. I always get emotionally available people. I always have amazing first dates. They can't get enough. Yeah. Of them. They always want to, you know, date me more and ask me for a second date. Then we're creating that new reality where people have to reflect that back to you. Mm. And so it's just shifting from, you're shifting out of that old reality whether you prepave or revise, it's changing you. It's changing your story, yep. changing your circumstances in your mind. Yeah. And I don't, I think sometimes, you know, people get so in the tech, there's nothing wrong with the techniques, but I think people get too caught up in like, should I revise here or do this or mm. do this or do this or affirm? I need, I need actual affirmations for this one topic. And it's like, yeah, none of that is the power. The power is you in the mind. And the thoughts that you're thinking mm. about yourself in this experience is what will manifest. Yeah. So, it isn't the magic affirmation or if you're prepaved enough or you're revised enough, it's mm. focusing on what you want and holding that assumption until it manifests. Yeah. For long enough until the energy breaks and it becomes yes the only thing that can manifest because you've got so good, like, you know, when we were talking before and you said, you know, I start and I do my affirmations, do my affirmations. I get to a point where I don't even need to affirm that anymore because it yeah. is just who I am. And that's what happens. You climb the hill, you climb the hill, you climb the hill. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, it's, it's like it just snaps open and you no longer have to try and believe an affirmation. You are in the state that you have wanted to get to. You're there now. So you know, I mean, I find I don't affirm I'm loved anymore in relationship. I know I am, not in an arrogant way, but my partner loves me. I know that. I right. know I am loved. I don't go around going, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. Right. I don't even go, I am love. I don't even, I don't even walk around saying I am love anymore. Do I think about it sometimes? Yeah, I don't just totally avoid it, but I just... I don't know. I, 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 you know, decades later, I, I don't, I've done it a lot. It's become the marrow in my bones. It, it's it hard to back, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Cause then you can go and work on something else, but yeah, I do. I do feel loved. I do feel supported. I do feel secure. I do feel those things today and not from anybody, but, but right. yes, my partner reflects it back to me. Thank you very much. I don't take that for granted, but he is me pushed out. I know that. I know that. I know that it's taken a long time. It's taken a long time. It's taken a lot of relationships, but this one shows me that this stuff is now the strongest assumption within me that permeates out about men, about relationships, about love. And I love that you said that because we're, and listen, we're off topic, but who cares, right? But <laughs> no, because I think this is important because this is for me, and this is what you and I were talking about before we jumped on too, and you just really like drove it home is that 
when you keep persisting in the apps, so we have to remember that we're reprogramming our mind. We're creating a new reality for ourselves. If we have the old programming, the old reality that we're not wanted, we're not valued, and we've created that experience where people reflect that back to us, that has been an old belief system. So when we start affirming a new story, we don't believe it, which is why we have to keep affirming it because we don't naturally feel that way. And it's not really being reflected back to us consistently for us to just naturally assume it the way we naturally assume we're not loved and we're not wanted when we've had that reflected back enough we really believe that about ourselves so Mm. it's the same thing where we're creating the new story that you 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 persisted so much and this is who i am and your new story about who you are and how your relationships are and the people you know in your life are feel about you Mm. you 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 persisted until neville says it hardened into fact where you, this is who you are. This is the reality you've been in Mm. and you've been in it long enough where you no longer seek evidence or have to affirm to make it happen or create that experience because you've permeated your subconscious mind now so much. Like you, this is who you are. This is your life. And it's been, Mm. and you naturally believe this. And, and, you know, I always use the example for me, with my weight, like I have fluctuated with weight in the past, like 10 or 15 pounds here or there, but I'm five, four. So those 10 or 15 pounds would show up. Trust me. I look like a meatball sometimes, but, and I'm five foot four too. Oh What's my gosh. Saying? So you get it. <laughs> we are trendies. I swear we are. I'm Italian too, girl. We're like dark hair, Italian, doing the same kind of coaching five, four. Yeah. Yeah, we're bookends. We're bookends. I've told you that we before. are. It's my soul sister. <laughs> um, but I always would feel like I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so I when I decided I was going to be fit, healthy, and strong, I affirmed that every day, and I started changing my lifestyle. For me, I wanted to go work out. So that was six years ago. So after a couple months, it became who I was. I don't affirm for that. It's who I am. I know it to be. Yeah. It's just who I am. Like, I don't have to affirm that this, because I live that life, it's, it's reflected to me all the time. And this yeah. is the thing with the SPs and money. It's like you persist in the new story in here and you affirm yeah. it until it manifests so much in your reality that you just know and expect this because it's your normal life. Yeah, for sure for sure. And it does take a while to sort of get there. You do have to work on it very systematically through affirmations, through, you know, do I believe this? No, I don't believe it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to be disciplined. And you do work on the mental fitness like you do on the physical fitness. And then somewhere along the line, you go, oh my God, I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I, I can, when do you stop? When you see the evidence. Yeah. You I cannot, think, you can't you're argue with conscious results. of it, right? Like when yeah, you don't, yeah. you're not even consciously aware that you don't need to affirm this anymore. You start focusing on something else you want to manifest into your existence. You just feel this way. You, you have do. it, you're experiencing it. You do. And I think too, like uh, this week, I've been hearing a lot via email and in the Q and A about, you know, when people are affirming, especially for relationships where they 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 do the I am love, I am loved, I'm lovable, I'm wanted, I'm secure, those types of affirmations. And then the the topic of doing affirmations for, you know, so-and-so loves me, they only have eyes for me, you know, and I've used some of those affirmations myself. But I find now I don't I don't I don't choose to do affirmations of my partner adores me. He only has eyes for me because I don't need validation from him anymore. I just, I, I feel loved and I'm actually okay when say he's not loving me. I'm actually okay when he's not giving me attention. I'm actually okay. I don't need to mold him anymore like I used to because I actually, I don't need the whole world to love me. I used to, it was like, you know, when you're feeling unloved and unwanted, you, you were affirming that, you know, everybody loves me and isn't it wonderful? I'm valued and I'm respected by, and I used to do a lot of those affirmations. Whereas today, and it's kind of been stepping stones. It's like, now I'm okay if people don't like me. Now I'm okay if someone doesn't love me. Now I'm okay. I've actually had a friend um, block me this week after 30 years. Um, and as I see it, it's I'm not giving her enough. 
Mm. So, and I'm okay with, I don't want to give any more. I actually don't. I, I don't want that type of dynamic. So I'm okay with being blocked. Yeah. I'm okay with people resenting me. I'm okay with that. And it's not going to get in because my sense of self, my sense of self-love, my sense of self-worth isn't reliant on me living in the end of everybody doing what I want so that I feel right. good. Right. It's like I've kind of split the, the layers of the onion off and I can feel good irregardless of the condition yeah. with different people. And I'm not, I don't even want to revise because I'm, I can be okay, still feel secure and loved and wanted irregardless of what other people are doing. So I think for me, I've gone through stepping stones of he only has eyes for me. My friend loves me, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was a learning, whereas now I don't need the confirmation from the outside world like I used to. I used to really need outside reassurance, whereas yeah. now even from my partner, I don't need it. And that's well, taken a long time. I'll be honest, that's taken a that's, long time. Right. But that's beautiful that you're there because that's where everyone will get if they keep persisting in this. Because in the beginning, when you're, because I think this for me, I know my experience too, and like the people we work with, it's like, we're not used to having healthy, loving, long lasting, fulfilling relationships or whatever. We, I mean, all of us have had, I've, I was married for 10 years. Like we've all had something, but like, there's been more of a pattern where we weren't getting what we want. So when we're, yeah. when we're transitioning and we're understanding like, oh, this is me creating this, right. And changing the self-concept and changing the assumptions of relationships and the people you're involved with we have to consciously affirm that because we're changing everything about our reality. So this is no longer a pattern. And when you do that to a certain point, it's kind of like what you're saying, like you see it so much and it just is part of who you are naturally and how you feel. Mm. And you just don't, you affirm other things. Like I tell people all the time, I'm like, <laughs> you'll, you'll want to affirm, Hey, I want him to take me to Hawaii this year. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like I want to do Hawaii or like maybe yeah. the romance has fallen off a little bit. So maybe you'll affirm like, you know what? I want to be, have more romance in my relationship. And you start affirming that, like you'll find something else or business yes. or you, yes. or, you know, but this is, I think important because everyone will get there. Like we all get there with certain things, like people that are successful with their money. They don't, they're not affirming all day long about money. It's no, they are like, they know the money's coming in. They're not worried, you know, but I think that's the place to get to. Like, mm. that's the fucking goal. Yeah. You know, I, you know I he's not going that. anywhere. That's your natural assumption. <laughs> you created that reality where you feel secure that if there's an issue, if there, whatever, cause it's going to happen where none of us are mm. perfect, that yeah. you're not spiraling and like what people do when we feel insecure and we're new in the game uh, fuck, I got to create this new concept of self and this new reality where my relationships work and I'm not putting them on the pedestal and, you know, going through that whole mm. process. Right. That's the way yeah. I look at it. Yeah. I, yeah. It's funny over the years, it's, you know, because Neville is so much about um, living in the end and imagining and he talks about imagination creates reality. So you use these techniques to, try and bring in your desires but and I think that's a wonderful thing because creating is fun it's it's like okay let me try this or let me try that but I think after um well because I read my first Neville book and Florence book in the 1990s it's like years on you go yeah, I know I can do that. I feel confident in my ability to create. I feel confident in my, in my self-love and I feel confident in I have a really good day from morning till nighttime. My life's relaxed. I don't get really tired anymore. I don't get really sick anymore. I don't get because you, 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 you're never dropping below 50% because mm -hmm. as soon as you get to 50, you go, hang on, I'm tired. I, I'm getting a little bit tired. Let me sleep more. Let me drink more water. Let me. So you, your reserves, you've got much more reserves and you protect your reserves. So it's like now it's, it's enjoying the day from morning till bedtime in a quiet way without having to broadcast it anywhere on any platform, on any, anything and, and, and living a life that's quietly comfortable 
and there's no need to always have to tell anyone about it. It's you literally are just living in your own skin in this really wonderful, peaceful, drama free, emotionally comfortable existence. Now, is it like that all the time? No, but it is like that a good 80% of the time. Yeah. And and it's so great to feel you know, I remember, I can't remember, Neville says there's a particular um, thing he talks about, about investing your time, your money. It's either your energy or your love. I can't remember. It's, it's three out of those four. But, I, you know, as time has gone on, investing my love in my relationship, investing my time in my business and in my, you know, doing my yoga, doing my gym, doing my walking, doing my mental diet, affirmations, self-love meditations, you know, like I, today I think I did two meditations today and, and, you know, one of them was checking someone's personal meditation that I had recorded and I thought, okay, let me actually lay down and be a participant to see how it sounds, to see if it feels okay before I send it off. So you go with the flow of the day of what do I feel like doing? What What is my attention going to go on to that brings me joy? And and there is really nothing in my life anymore that I don't enjoy. And, and I weeded those out over the years because there were a lot of things I didn't enjoy from my job to, you know, um, just so many things. My reserves were down to zero and then into the minus that I would get sick a lot. I'd often be in debt. You know, there was everything was in the minus. Oh, I didn't have enough time, didn't have enough love, didn't have enough money, didn't have enough resources. So when you're living at that survival level you're constantly putting out fires and there's a drama somewhere yeah but as you keep topping up the reserves topping up the reserves topping up the reserves over the years those dramas drop away your emotional uncomfortability drops away and your obsession to constantly satisfy another desire even that kind of drops away not fully but you get really your desires are much tighter, much fewer, and probably much great, grander in size, as you and I talked about, you know, creating this with the business or different things. It's like you know you can create at this level. So let's see if we can create at that bigger level because I know I am a good focuser. I am a good um I'm great at working with the law of assumption. Look at what that happened and that. Let me see if I can extend that. So you're playing against yourself all the time. That's and that's really fun. fun. Yes. <laughs> that is to me. Yeah, that was when I was going through like all my journey too with the self-love and self-concept and understanding everything like and finding that inner peace. And, and just like you said, like, I love my life. I'm good with someone, without someone. I don't care. I've I've never uh, really cared if people have been mad at me. Like that's just always been my kind of personality. Yeah. Like I really just live my life on my terms, but I think like it's such a beautiful place to get to. And then when you're understanding this, it's, I think it's easier when you're intentionally creating because you're not still desperately like attached. Like some people still are just in that concept of self when they're trying to manifest their SPN or more money. in. they're really in that state of emotional desperation still because they haven't practiced the new self-concept and the self-love stuff enough to kind of get them balanced and, and focusing their mind and, and retraining how to feel differently and be differently and view everything differently while you're focusing on the SP and it is a transition. It's a process, you know, nobody, I didn't get this shit right off the bat. I'm still growing, um, but it does get fucking easier. And the return, the return on investment of you investing in yourself is like unbelievable, like unbelievable. It's changes your life. Like Mm. I look at how different my life is from a year ago to now versus the year before that, you know, to yep. here, like it just keeps bigger shifts and bigger shifts, you know, and yeah. everyone will have that if they do the ment. to me, it's the mental discipline. And I agree. If you don't get the mind in the right groove, yeah, then your emotions don't fall in line. They just don't. The, the, the more madness in the head, the more madness in the emotions. I mean, thoughts create emotions and they do. We look at being a therapist, cognitive behavior therapy. It's, it's law of assumption. 
Mm. It, and I'll tell you one thing, it's, it's one of the most, if not the most powerful therapy practices there is, it's the most effective one. It's um, evidence-based because it's changing your thoughts, which change your behaviors. You interrupt the thought pattern, you interrupt the yeah. pattern, the emotional pattern. It's, it's what we do with law of assumption. It's focusing on changing the story, changing the perspective, mm. um, looking at something different and persisting in that. And that's mm. how you change anxiety. I had anxiety, panic attacks. It's in the fucking mind. You don't need yeah. that. Yeah. It's getting this under wraps, Th this yeah. brings inner peace or this will bring fucking trouble. Yeah. 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 You're talking to the converted baby. <laughs> <laughs> so pre-paving oh. or revision both work. <laughs> All In the time. Yeah. I mean, listen, all the techniques work, but honestly, and even Neville, you and I were talking about this before Neville says, once you master your inner dialogue, the inner conversations in your mind, you can lay down every fucking technique there is. You will not need any techniques because those techniques are helping you <laughs> focus on what you want to manifest where that's what the mental diet is. So yeah. they both work, do what feels right for you. Neither one is like more magical than the other, because a lot of people get so caught up in um, like, they're like this technique and that, and am I doing it wrong uh. or right? Like, it's not the fucking technique. You're the power. You're the operant power. It's, yeah. The technique is just helping you focus. So yeah, you exactly. Train yourself. It's an, it's a skill set to learn to focus on the yeah. new story every time your mind goes to the old story you just switch yeah. it switch, it's annoying you switch it switch it switch it and mm. then it doesn't become annoying and then it's naturally you're just thinking that way more so than not yeah so agree so agree it's um yeah the game of life and how to play it as florence scoville shin said so well in her book and you are playing it against yourself there's no other opponent it's, it's you fucking the universe <laughs> everyone is you pushed out law of assumption to me is yeah. the game changer it's the key to the universe like there's nothing you can't have in my yeah. opinion once you understand these concepts and you get that mental diet on point and you really understand that all i have to do is think and focus on what i want and just persist in that until it manifests so regularly in your life that yeah actually wake up one day and you just don't even worry about it because you've yeah. had the experience so much. Yeah. It, it's so amazing. Like it's so simple. It is. It, it, it is really, really is simple. It really is simple. It's just the application part. You got to persist in the application, persist in the application until it becomes like a second skin. Yeah. And, and that, uh, that's the hang up that people struggle with. They want to give up. <laughs> yeah. Or what I see is they want to hop to another technique, another technique, another technique, another technique, and then you water everything down and nothing grows roots. So you're better off, you know, and I don't, I'm not a, there's, this is the way. And, you know, cause look, I think religion's done that. We're right. You're wrong. And every, you know, I yeah. just don't think Neville's the only way or Florence is the only way or Wayne Dyer is the only way or Abraham Hicks. I think everybody brings something to the basket. And I think yeah. it's, it's how they, say it that you might hear it on that day and not just hear it but listen apply if you can do that and you pull from different people you know there is so many wonderful people that limiting yourself to only one teacher or one you know i think you block out a lot of really good information from others so you know i think over the years, there'd be at least a dozen teachers that have contributed to my mental diet. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. At least a dozen. Yeah. And I think too, it's like, you know, going through all of this journey. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, I am like, I would read and listen and so many people just to get different perspectives and expand my mind and understand things on different levels. And where I'm at today, because of my understanding with everyone as you pushed out and law of assumption, and I don't really subscribe to a lot of the other stuff that's mainstream yeah. out there. And I think it really waters us down and um, disempowers us in so many ways and makes it so much more complicated and like sporadic and just, mm. you know, I really have, I only focus on maybe two or three people I listen to now. Okay. And it's getting even smaller. 
because yeah. I really don't. Who do you, can you mention who they are just out of curiosity? Well, I love you. Um, yeah, I love you. I love Bentino, Bentino. Oh, yes. Yeah, like he, you know, I don't agree with everything he said. Cause listen, even Neville's really the one, but I don't even take everything he says um, face value. I do like Amanda from Create Your Future because she really nails down everyone as you pushed out. Like she talks about it so much. Like if you okay. really want to fucking learn it, like listen to her shit because she just repeats it. We're all repeating the same thing, but yeah. It really is your assumption of your side. I think I prefer to focus a lot on self-concept. Um, yep. You need to change your story about who you are, especially in a relationship. And yes. Person, because a lot of people you can, like I've said a million times, like I'm amazing in my career and friends and life. But then when I was dating, I had a low concept of self with that person. And that, that's yep. what a lot of people, and they don't see that. So you want to help people understand that even if you have high value about yourself and other areas of your life, if you have this person on a pedestal, if you're chasing them, if you're feeling inferior to them and insecure, then that means you have a low concept of self in connection with them. So you yeah. change that. You, ch- yeah. you have to change your story about them because if you don't see them different, yep. you're going to change because you're going to keep thinking the same thing about them. They don't love me. They don't want me. They're this, they're yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're creating that in your mind. So you have to keep experiencing that. Mm. So it really, um, I've forgotten about Ben Tino. God, I'm glad you mentioned. You know what? He hasn't done anything in a minute and I subscribed him on YouTube and he has a podcast now because he's like super spiritual and like real deep. Um, but I don't agree with everything he says either. And I don't think we should, we're, you shouldn't probably agree. You shouldn't agree with everything I say. Like we all have, yeah, exactly. Take what you like and throw the rest out. That's what I do. But yeah. I don't listen to law of attraction people at all anymore. I yeah. can't. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's, to me, it's too misleading and it's missing the point and, and I get it. So there really isn't that many people, I yeah. guess. That do. You know, Bentino did this um, YouTube. I've still got it in my favorites. It's called manifesting powerhouse. I will put the link down below, but it is a profound YouTube that I go back to again and again and again. I think it's one of the best ones he's ever done in my opinion that I've listened to of his. Yeah. Just, it is a powerful, powerful, just conversation. So I love it. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned him. I've forgotten about him. He fucking smokes cigars and he swears. I'm like, (laughs) that's my kind of spiritual person right (laughs) there. Hang out with him. And I don't smoke cigars, but he can smoke one in front of me. We'll talk about our, does he have tattoos? No, I'll swear. We can talk about my tattoos and his cigar. (laughs) Uh, We're all a mixed bag of nuts, aren't we? My God. Mixed bag. You know, you're going to find people you resonate with because even the therapist, like, not everybody liked me. I don't care. Like I never took it personal because we're not all meant for each other. And like, yeah, no. I mean, pushed out, but it wasn't an issue. It wasn't like I was recreating a pattern where most people didn't like me. In fact, what would usually happen is when I worked with a lot of addiction and like grief and loss and stuff like that. So they would not really like me in the beginning. Some of them, the clients, because I would tell them the truth. Cause I'm a straight yep. shooter. Right. And then once their mind started changing, and they started becoming healthier with their thinking, they fell in love with me and they would work with me for years because yeah. like, you, you called the bullshit right away. They just didn't want yep. it. They were defended in their old story, you know? Yeah. I always, I love that because I knew that I was like, you'll like me in about three months. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, no, I'm like, yeah, you will. Don't worry about it. They're not. <laughs> him. I'm like, I told you, cause you were on, you were not healthy in your mind. So you were not going <gasps> to like a healthy mind coming at you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Thank, thanks for hopping on and doing this this was a good another good chat I love how we have no structure and we always go down rabbit holes I love that that to me is always fun (laughs) it is because it's like you just got to go with what comes out I know that's why I love doing like collabs with you because we just we have one topic and then we just like it's like a firework it just explodes into all these different pieces So prepave or revision, the choice is yours. The choice is yours and all the bits in the middle were, you know, the other bits of the sandwich that you didn't expect. So there you go. Yes. All right. You all appreciate you all. Bye everybody. We'll see you as always on our channels and 
I'll put all the links down to Kimmy's stuff so you can find her, you can find me, and you can find what we talked about. See you later, everyone. Bye.